Are you looking for a definition of done template? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how to create this template. And as you can see, we've broken it down by user story, sprint, and also release. Now, if you do want to save yourself a little bit of time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick that up. And it also supports this channel, so it is always appreciated. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this from scratch and also be making some recommendations and suggestions along the way. You can also tweak this to meet your needs. So this is all about ensuring that every task meets clear, predefined standards before it's marked as complete. It will help you to maintain consistency, quality, and accountability within your team. Now, you can set this up in various different ways. You can have it all presented in one sheet. As you kind of scroll down, you can have the various sections, or you can do it in three different tabs, as I showed you in that previous uh, example. Let me now just walk you through exactly how I would build it out in three different tabs. So, which I think is, a natural way to kind of differentiate between them. So what I would suggest that you do is just give each kind of tab a headline or a title, if you like. So I'm going to do it like this. So definition of done, user story. So in B2, I'm going to bold this and I want to increase the font to about 20 on the home ribbon. Now you can change the font to whatever kind of matches your particular needs, preferences, branding, etc. And you can do the same with colors as well. But I'm just going to go from A1 through to O2, and I'm going to put a grey background just to differentiate it as a title. I'm also just going to put something like this, definition of done, user story, just in the bottom, so it's clear what is open in front of us. At which point we're going to go ahead and build this table and checklist, if you like. So I'm going to start in B4. I'll, I'll write them all out, then we'll do some formatting, but I'll try and explain what e you should kind of include in each one as we go along. So the first is we want a task ID. Now, this is usually an alpha numeric identifier to differentiate and track each task across the checklist. So this would be something like US1. If we we're doing like the, the release version, it would be something like REL-1, something like that. But let me just show you what this would look like for this particular instance. So we've got task ID. I'm actually gonna do that. We'll do the formatting after. Then we want somewhere to put a description of that task. So a concise explanation of what the task entails, providing clear context and purpose for team members and stakeholders. Next, we're gonna have criteria. Now in the criteria column, we want to enter some general standards or requirements that the task must fulfill to be marked as completed. Now these focus on ensuring the task aligns with the project goals. Next, we're gonna have acceptance criteria. Now, what we want to put in here are the specific and measurable conditions that define the success of the task. So these criteria ensure that the deliverable meets the agreed upon requirements. We're gonna have status, so the current progress of the task. So we're gonna have things like not started, in progress or completed. Um, I'll walk you through that in a second. But basically they help to monitor task flow and identify bottlenecks. And then we're also gonna to want to have a completed checkbox. This is gonna be a checklist template. Now you don't have to necessarily have this, but it just visually makes kind of sense as well. Now you could actually have something like comments if you wanted to on the end. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select B4 through to H4. I'm gonna bold, I'm gonna put a gray background on. I'm gonna make row four a bit bigger by hovering over between four and five, left clicking and changing the height to about 27. I'm going to, in the home ribbon still, I'm going to middle align and I'm also going to center as well. Now, I'm gonna make some of these a bit bigger. So I'm just hovering between the columns till I see that icon, left clicking and dragging across. Some of these are gonna want more kind of width because there's gonna be a lot more content in them. Now we can always change this as we go on, but I think this would make sense just to include it for now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up, let me go through some of these. Let's set up, we'll put a border around. So I'm gonna go on the home ribbon, I'm going to go all borders just to give it that kind of table effect. Now, if we were to go to view and grid line, we'd 
you could see once the grid lines are off, we've got that table. Let's go back to the home ribbon. So now it would be pretty much populating it. So this would go down through to something like, let's just do 10 for now, actually. And I'll delete these. So select 15 to 19, shift on my keyboard, right click on my mouse, delete. We'd put a task description in here. We'd put the criterion, put the acceptance criterion. Now the status is going to be a drop down. So what I'm going to do is select from F5 through to, um, no, I'm not actually. I'm going to select all of the column F. I'm going to go data at the top. I'm then going to go data validation, data validation, allow list. Now the options, so in the source, we want to type in not started, comma, in progress, comma, pending review, comma, revisions, revisions needed, completed, blocked, and press OK. Now you'll notice now we have all these options and they apply to every single row in the sheet, but we don't really want it to be in these columns here. So what I'm going to do is select from F1 through to F4, click on data validation, also on the data tab, data validation, click this and put any value. So now it's removed from these here, but we still have it on all of them underneath. Now in terms of completed, this is when we want our checkbox. So let me now show you how to do it. So what you want to do is you need to go to the developer um, ri ribbon, uh, develop, developer option on the ribbon. Now it may be that you don't have that, okay? So you might need to... Um, you might need to kind of right click on the this at the top and click on customize the ribbon. On, the, on here, what you need to do is look here and make sure that developer is checked. If you don't, it won't be an option. So if I take it off, developer is not an option. So right click, customize this ribbon. Now I've done this ahead of time, which is why it's there. So if the first thing you need is that developer thing. Now click on it and then click on insert and what you're looking for in the form controls is checkbox. And what this will do, you'll see a little plus there as I scroll around. We then just need to put it in here. So then what you want to do is left click, kind of put it in the center. That will do. And then I'm going to right click here, edit text. I'm going to press right on my keyboard, right to the end, backspace. I'm removing all that text. So now we have a checkbox. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to move it a little bit more central. And then once you're happy with its position, right click, uh, sorry, left click on the cell. See this, hover over the bottom right, and then left click all the way down, and it will bring it all the way down. So now we have this checklist against each task. Fantastic. Now, we are pretty much good to go. To go. All you'd need to do is enter the, the information. So the t your task description, your criteria, your acceptance criteria. We've got our status, and we could add additional comments. So now all we need to do, at this point, you could either... You could do something like this. You could press Control C and you could put it here. And then what you could be basically doing is having this as the, um, this could be our sprint as an example. Definition of done sprint. And then you could do another one such as two more down, release. And then you'd need to, what you'd need to do is you'd need to go in here and just do something like, um, something like that and change the task ID and then you would obviously do that as well um, like that and then you'd have it kind of available all in one view that's one option if you wanted it in separate tabs or sheets I'm going to delete all that off all you'd have to basically do is right click on here move or copy create a copy Make sure it's in this sheet. I'm going to move it to the end. Press OK. And then all you need to do here is, let's just call this sprint. And you just pretty much be replicating this across. Like that. And then you'd obviously have to do this. And now you'd essentially have everything pre-done, pre-built. You don't need to create it all again, but you'd have these different options. So that is how to create the template. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. As I said, if you want to pick up the template that is kind of pre-built, pre-formatted with all the task description criteria and acceptance criteria, then there will be a link in the description down below. Other than that, best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.